Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to go back to Clear Linux, do an install, and bring it up and kick the tires on it a little bit, and then tell you what we think. And we're back. And so what I'd like to do is, is kind of walk through some of the in installation steps with you. I've already done these, but before we do that, let's go up to the Get Started uh, menu and look at the pre-install. And you probably remember this from last time, we talked a little bit about that we have, we have a requirement to have a 64-bit processor. We need to have these instruction set extensions as well as we need four gig of memory and 20 gig of hard disk. Now I told you that um, if you install this off the live CD package, it will, it will do a check to see whether or not your system is compatible. But today we're gonna be installing this under KVM and so how do we do that? Well, the way we do it is Intel has provided a script and they provided a script to actually go out and check uh, the installation Sorry about that. The uh, installation of uh, uh, the system to make sure that the host system that the KVM is running on has the necessary support. And to do that, uh, they have this download uh, for us, and then you just chmod it and then run it. So I'm going to do that. And the first way you can run it is with the parameter host, and that tells you whether or not you can run Clear Linux as a workstation or as a server. Well, if I type this in correctly, instead of an ls, uh, it'll show that I have I have the necessary things that I need in order to install this as a workstation or as a server. If I want it to, if I want to check to see whether or not it'll support container, uh, then I just put in a parameter that says container, and then it'll do a few more checks besides the ones it did previously. And I'll look at to see whether or not I have virtualization support turned on. Do I, do I have KVM installed? Is it supporting Intel? And does it support nested uh, VMs? Which is important for what we're about to do with, with Kata. And then so forth uh, on down. So all of the necessary pre-checks on the, on the containers is good. And so we should be ready to go. Uh, at this point, I'm done with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll go down here to the next step, which is the install. Now, if I was if I was doing if I was doing a a, a boot from a live CD, I would go ahead and, and do that that step. But we're not. So uh, you'll notice that there's also there's a, quite a few different ways you can install this. Uh, you can install uh, a live server. This is for the mass deployment using the Pixie host. Uh, if you want to deploy Clear Linux to a, a whole host of machines uh, to bare metal that don't have any operating system on them. Uh, also, uh, you have instructions for Hyper-V, you have it for KVM, VirtualBox, VMware, and then you can also deploy to the cloud. Uh, I did try to run this on VirtualBox and I did run into a couple of problems with VirtualBox. One, Clear Linux is very slow under VirtualBox, not quite sure why that is. And the second problem, we talked a little bit about it in the first video, that it, it is not going to be using Kata runtime. It's going to be using Run C. And if you look at the documentation for Clear Linux, they talk about if you're using Run C and Kata, Kata conforms to the OCI uh, standard. And so uh, Docker does not have all of the APIs covered. So you may run into some issues, and I did. Uh, so that's another reason why we're, I'm going to be using KVM. Uh, first of all, because it's running the native Kata container, uh, excuse me, the Kata runtime, and secondly, it just runs a lot faster, uh, and 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 that's good. That's what I want. <laughs> that's what I want from my machines. Um, <clears throat> so the first step is depending upon which host OS you're running your KVM on, and I'm running Fedora 30 workstation. Uh, you would then pick whichever uh, whichever command you need in order to install the QEM uh, uh, QEMU KVM. The next thing is once you have that done, you can go ahead and download the image, which would be the, this is a, an image for KVM. It's a thinned image, doesn't have everything in it that the uh, desktop image has. And then you would uncompress that. These three are used uh, to create the UEFI BIOS that uh, the KVM needs to pass 
to Clear Linux in order for Clear Linux to operate correctly. So you have to; those are required. And then you would download the uh, startup shell script, and we can take a look at that. And we'll do uh, a look at the uh, actual script and it's a this script uh, is kind of interesting it's very it's very well done it has uh, the the command line that we're passing which would be the name of the image and then this is setting up the bios uh, the UFE bios uh, uh, image which would have which would have the it's not an image it's really a, a, a the a necessary thing that the KVM needs in order to support it and those are using the files that you downloaded the VMN the, the VM number that's being used so that if you want to run multiple copies of clear Linux that are separate you can you can pass that and then it will automatically change your exposed ports now this one would have to be changed uh, in order to work but uh, these down here would then add, this would be 10,022 for the first one, and 20, 20, 222, and then this would be uh, 12,375 for the uh, uh, host forward port. Uh, this one is a little bit different than the initial one that you download, and that is because it is supporting uh, uh, GNOME graphics. So the desktop uh, is one of the things I wanted to install, and we'll talk about that when we get down to it. Uh, but once you have everything ready, uh, I can go ahead and show you uh, that. So let me let me get out of this. And I downloaded uh, version 30740. So if you look here, it's talking about the version number for the uh, KVM image. And so that is what that is referring to. So if I go ahead and start this. And that's it. I, I am running uh, Clear Linux. So I can go ahead and s sign in. And you can see that I am indeed running Clear Linux on this, uh, on, on, on my host system under the KVM. I can also do mtech and see what uname support I have. Uh, and so forth. So I basically have a console window into the system, but that's not really what I wanted. I mean, console windows are great, but I do like a GUI. So, and you can also access the machine from SSH, uh, and those are the instructions to install the necessary packages that you need. Uh, also, you'll notice that it refers to the IP address of the KBM host. Now, my experience with uh, with uh, Fedora Workstation 30, at least, I can't speak to the other ones, but I had to put in localhost for this to work, uh, and, and it's because I the default KVM image doesn't have a it is a private IP address. It is not set up to go through a bridge, so you can change that if you want, but uh, the by default is not set up set up that way. Then the next thing uh, I wanted to have is a is the this is the optional display manager, and so you would install on your host in for, uh, your host OS the virtual viewer, which is a spice uh, a spice viewer. It's sort of like RDM or RDP, I should say, sort of like RDP, and then make those changes to that uh, startup script, and then you'll have to resize the partition, the default partition for. The KVM is 9 gig, and of course, that's not large enough to hold a, a GNOME desktop. So there's instructions on here on how to expand that in order to support the additional space. Uh, and then you can follow this link down here in order to get the image recognized by uh, the, uh, the operating system and by the KVM. Uh, once you've done that, you'll need to install a desktop because the default KVM image does not have one. It's strictly console. Uh, so then you'll need to pick whichever desktop you want, and there's a number of them. If you install desktop auto start, it's going to by default install GNOME. Um, so the next step is, since I have it, is to run this, which will allow me to launch the uh, the uh, the GUI. Now again, it's localhost, and this says to use the uh, IP address of the KVM, which doesn't work for me. 
uh, and then it launches up uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, GDDM login. Now there is a problem here, so, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel this. It, you notice what it did? Is that the first time through it, it takes me to the username when it's already, <laughs> I don't know. Bug. <laughs> Minor bug, but a bug. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm now into uh, I'm now into the GUI, and uh, I'm signed on as, as a user instead of root. And let's just take a look. So I have um, I, I, I have my, my typical setup. Uh, and one of the things that this system has, we talked about this last last time, which is that the Etsy uh, directory is part of the stateless file system. And so <clears throat> it is very minimal. And so if you're installing things like NFS, you'll have to put the other files out here, like the RPC bind uh, config files that you'll need for that uh, in order for NFS to work. A and also, so is VAR. VAR is also part of the stateless uh, file systems. And these are the two file systems that you would delete and then restart Clear Linux if you wanted to recover from a, a totally a total misconfiguration snafu and you wanted to just get back to a known factory install. And so you can do that while preserving what's in your home directory. Um, a very handy thing. I'm not going to test that today, but uh, maybe some other future time we'll do that. I just, I, I just, it took a while to install all this and I really don't want to do that again uh, in case it doesn't work. Not that I, not that I doubt that it would work, wouldn't work, but you know, it, yeah, I don't trust it. <laughs> so um, let's take a look at uh, a couple other things. Um, first of all, let's go into var lib. And you normally, if you install uh, Clear Linux as a workstation, uh, it would have a directory here for telemetry. Uh, even if you decide not to put it, not to uh, use it, it still installs it. But you'll notice that on KVM, it doesn't even bother to install telemetry. So uh, my advice is, if you're really concerned about telemetry, just install the KVM version of it, and uh, and you won't have any telemetry that, to be collecting anything on your system. Uh, at least not that way uh, to collect any data on your system. Um, and the other thing. Uh, that we should probably talk about a little bit is the software installer. It's a, it's a little bit different. Um, oh, I see I've got an update. Uh, if I go here to other, well, so first of all, you have the normal things for flat packs, right? So, but you'll notice that some of these have funny boxes. It's not because there's an icon mix missing. It's because these are bundles. And uh, instead of being a flat pack, this is an actual uh, SWAPD bundle. And this particular pack, uh, Sunder, has both a, and has, it could be installed by itself, and it also is a member of these other packages. So these other bundles, I keep saying packages, but they're really bundles. And, uh, and so you can look for, you can either, they, it's kind of nice that, excuse me, it's kind of nice that Intel has done this, and it looks like they might be bending to pressure a little bit, uh, from the community in, in that, that a lot of people have been asking for a little bit more autonomy in uh, installing packages without having to install this huge set of applications just to get audacious for example uh, so um, be that as may it looks like that's what they're doing so you do have flat packs and they would have a normal icon and you do have bundles which would appear as this funny looking cube Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, I'm going to go back to my home directory here. The next thing I want to talk about is is Docker. And so let's go to system control and do a, a, a status on Docker and see what we're at with it. And it's, it's not running, so let's go ahead and start that. I'm going to bring this up again. Normally, it would it would tell you the runtime uh, is uh, run C down here, and you'll notice that it has replaced it with the Kata runtime. So we know we have the VM support for uh, Docker. So if I run if if I run a Docker image, it's actually going to deploy a, a Kata in, a VM, and then it's going to install Docker as part of it. So uh, Docker, of course, will be running on the outside. Then you'll have Kata's VM, and then you'll have the image that's running, and that's the way it would deploy. 
So let's uh, we can we can try that. We can do a, a Docker uh, run, and then I'll do a, a this is their one of their examples using BusyBox, and so we'll go ahead and and we'll run this, uh, and then it should take me into a shell prompt for the BusyBox. Uh, let's see. Yep, it's definitely not. It's, it's definitely that is definitely not the operating system I'm running under. Uh, it is definitely different. That is definitely BusyBox. And then when I exit, in this particular case, because we didn't elect to run it as a, a daemon, it's not going to stick around. And it is indeed gone. So I think from my perspective, I have three comments to make about Clear Linux. First, very fast. Uh, and I... Uh, I, I really like the speed of it, even if it's running under uh, KVM, it's a VM, <laughs> and then I've got VMs running under the VM, and that all seems to be fairly snappy. Uh, I can show you that I only have, uh, I only have four cores that I've given to this and four gig of memory, which uh, it doesn't show up very readily there, but uh, uh, if I bring over this, it will. Because it doesn't have the uh, the, the highlights on, so uh, with KVM up and with uh, the Kata containers up and running, it's using about 800. Now, if if, if Docker was down, it would probably be around 260 meg of uh, memory that it would be consuming. So it's it's not very it's not very bad. It's pretty uh, pretty efficient um, overall. So so as far as efficiency and speed, I, I think it's very good. Uh, the second impression I have with it, I, I, I want to play around with Kata containers more. I like the idea of having a VM surround Docker and give me that extra layer of, of security, at, or at least uh, that extra layer of protection, let's put it that way, um, that I wouldn't have normally in running Docker. And of course, Docker runs as a, now I know they're working on a, they have a beta version of it where it's not running as root, but by right now, Docker runs as root. And that is always a concern when you're deploying into a production environment that you have a service that's deployed as root. Uh, and so uh, I like the idea of having the containers absorb that so that it limits the exposure of the system uh, to, the, to an attacker to the, just that particular VM, which I really like that. Um, the third comment I have is I'm a little leery about using anything from Intel right now because of the number of, of uh, exploits that they've had including the last one, which was in May. So I, I, am, I am a little leery about using Intel uh, and using Intel products uh, that were developed specifically for their OS. I am a little worried about that. Uh, so I don't think that I would be ready to put this in a production environment, but I am certainly willing to give this a try uh, in a development environment and just kick the tires on it and maybe, maybe a month or two months from now come back and let you all know uh, what I really think about it. So... Um, at any event, I hope you enjoyed this this look. If there's something of interest to you that you'd like to see, let me know in a comment uh, below on this video, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, we can maybe do something for you and, and maybe dig into it a little bit deeper. Hope you enjoyed this today, and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.